Hello everyone, my name is Sloan and welcome to my YouTube channel. We are now a few weeks into 2022 and last year was my first year like really getting into collecting houseplants and I learned a lot. So I wanted to share some of the main takeaways, just a few things that I learned and share with you some of my big goals that I have planned for the upcoming year. So the first lesson that I learned in 2021 was to not bother buying two inch plants. And I think this is a lesson that either you learn or you maybe you're good with two inch plants, but I've definitely heard um, from people before that they also don't buy two inch plants. When it comes to two inch plants, there's a few different reasons why they can be kind of difficult. So the first reason is that there's not a lot of soil in a two inch planter. And I'll actually, let me go grab a two inch plant. Here we go, here's a little a little two inch plant. This is from my friend Kaylee. Um, I think it was her grandma's cactus that she split up, so that's so fun. That's one of my favorite parts about house plants is giving them away to people. But anyway, uh, as you can see, this is very, very small. There's not a lot of soil in here, which means it dries out pretty quickly. And so you have to water two inch plants more than you would think. I don't know, I've never figured out the correct watering with most two inch plants. A cactus is really easy, so this, you know, this is fine. I, I don't have an issue keeping this one alive, but most two inch plants, it's really difficult to figure out when you're supposed to water it, in my experience. And along with that, a lot of times two inch plants are not very established plants. They're really young. They, it's just easier to kill them because they're really young. They're, they're they haven't lived very long. So I am going to try not to buy two inch plants in 2022. I purchased three in 2021. Uh, one was an eyelash fern. It was a fern. So, you know, I am not particularly surprised that it died. It lived for months. So it wasn't horrible, but you know, in hindsight, maybe not the best purchase. Uh, and the second plant was my very first Hoya. It was a Hoya Crimson Queen. It was super tiny. I had absolutely no business buying a tiny little Hoya and it died. And I should have known, I should have, you know, no, I shouldn't have known. We all have to learn our own lessons, right? Uh, the next Hoya that I purchased will be an established plant because I don't have Hoyas. And the best way to learn a genus of plants is not to buy a tiny, not very established plant. It's to buy a more established four, six inch pot. And the last plant that I purchased was pretty recent. It was a butterwort pinguicula in a two inch pot. And the reason I bought it was just because I never see them ever. It was the first time I'd ever seen them for sale in person. And so I snatched it up and it's still slightly green. So maybe it'll live. I don't know why it died, but it was my first carnivorous plant and in general, if you're going to start a new type of plant, don't start with a two inch. So there's lesson number one, don't buy a two inch plant. <laughs> this next lesson was a big lesson for me. So what is often said in the houseplant community is that the worst thing you can do to your plants is overwater them. And that's honestly still true. Like it, it's definitely not good to have your plants overwatered. It's the fastest way to kill them, but going super hard in the other direction isn't good anyway. Like I've heard so many people say, don't overwater your plants, don't overwater your plants, that I just went the complete other direction and very severely neglected a lot of my plants. And I saw some of my plants not do well because of that. And I just really learned that you can go too far in the other direction to where you are underwatering so badly or so well, I suppose, that it's detrimental to your plants. And really, you're not going to have super duper happy plants if you constantly underwater them. Like, will they live? Yeah, but like, are they going to grow for you a lot? Are they gonna be happy? No, and so it's really about finding that happy medium. And that was a big lesson for me this year. So kind of along with that was another big lesson in that no one is too good for a moisture meter. So I heard about moisture meters like very early on into 2021 and I was like, I don't need one because I water my plants by sticking my finger into the soil and I water my plants by picking up the pot to like see if it's, you know, lighter. And I did that for months and a lot of my plants got really underwatered because I was waiting for the pot to feel so light that I could practically like just chuck it across the room like with nothing, with 
with no effort, I could just throw it across the room. And finally, I don't know what month it was, maybe like, let's say like nine months into 2021, I finally purchased a moisture meter and I realized that a lot of my pots, I was letting dry out. Like even like, I don't even know what the number would be on the moisture meter, negative three. Like, so now I water most of my plants when the moisture meter hits around two. And it's kind of different depending on the plant. And I still will pick up the pot to kind of like get a general idea of what it feels like or stick my finger in the soil. But this thing has been helping me so much just to realize that I need to water a lot of my plants a lot more than I was. And no one's too good for this. Like, I don't know. I just thought that I really didn't need it. And it was this extra purchase. And this thing was like $7 on Amazon. I don't know why I was so against it, but I just didn't feel it was necessary. And it turns out that it is an incredibly helpful tool. And the last lesson of 2021 is that if you start out your uncommon plant collection with propagations, you are going to have a lot of small plants. And that's probably self-explanatory, but it's something that I've kind of been thinking about like the more I've been getting into uncommon plants. And let me go grab one of my tiny plants just for fun. So this is one of my more uncommon plants. It is a philodendron, oh my gosh, no. It is a syncomium frosted heart. And I wouldn't, I don't know, you can get into like, is this plant rare, is it uncommon? I don't know, but you don't really see these for sale, so uncommon, regardless. Um, I got this as a propagation and gosh, I think I got it. It was still warm outside. So it was like early fall, late summer. And you know, it's put out one leaf for me and that's exciting. And you know, it took a long time for it to grow leaves. And this plant one day will be a big, beautiful plant. But a lot of my uncommon plants are tiny and it just takes a long time for plants that have been propagations to get established in comparison to going out and buying a full four inch, six inch established plant. And it's not necessarily a bad thing to have a bunch of really small plants. Obviously they take up less room, but it means that you can't do certain things. So I can't really easily do trades with people because I mean, tell me how I'm supposed to cut this to trade a propagation with someone like it's tiny. Which means a lot of people in 2022, it seems, are starting to do no buys with their plants. I can't do that because a lot of people that choose to do no buys are choosing to do so. And instead of buying, they're going to be trading with the plants that they already have. Well, like my collection is full of tiny, tiny plants, so I can't trade anything. And again, I don't really think this is, you know, completely a bad thing in terms of starting a an uncommon plant collection and not spending a lot of money this is the best way to do it honestly like i don't know how much this propagation cost me but it was nothing in comparison to what a full pot of frosted heart syngonium would be but it just means that there are certain things that i'm not able to do so that's all that i have to share in terms of what i learned in 2021 i there's probably a lot more that i did learn but those are kind of like my big overall year takeaways and a lot of those kind of feed into my 2022 goals. So my first 2022 goal is to keep up with watering better. So I've actually been really, really good about watering my plants over the last like month or two. I have a system now where I check every single one of my plants twice a week. And this works really well because I've noticed a lot of my plants need watered like maybe every 10 days. And so if you're only checking your plants once a week, then that's really 14, which means you're kind of waiting too long. But really, it's just that I'm checking them. It's not necessarily that I am watering them on a schedule. I'm just making sure to check them all on a schedule. And it really hasn't been that much more work. I haven't noticed, you know, I'm like excited about watering them. I'm not like, oh my gosh, I have so many plants to water. So I have really been enjoying that. And that's something I really want to keep up with in the next year because I have noticed my plants do seem a lot happier now that I'm keeping up with watering them a lot more. My next goal is an exciting one. And if you watched my Ted Lair plant shopping video, you would recognize this plant. This is my Philodendron Gloriosum, which is a plant that I never intended on purchasing because I never really wanted to have a crawler in my collection. But then I saw it in real life and I just, I fell in love. Like there's, there's no other way to put it. I am so excited about this plant. But the reason why I got it out is because my next 2022 goal 
is to let myself buy some larger uncommon plants because I would like to have the ability to trade with other people for different things or really just propagate and have more or give more uncommon plants away to some of my friends if they want to build their uncommon plant collection. Like I just want to have more ability to do that kind of thing and at this point I think this is a hobby that is going to stick and so I'm like a little bit more okay with spending a little bit more money on bigger plants. So this was kind of my first big large plant purchase of the year. I don't really know how many large plants that I'll purchase in 2022. I just am going to let myself do it sometimes whereas last year I was like no I can't spend that much money on a plant. So yeah, this was this was my first big one, and if you did watch my Ted Lair video, um, this leaf was not coming out this much then. Like it is, it has grown so much, and I actually I'm filming this a week after I shot that that video. So yeah, I am just beyond excited about this plant, and I think some of it is because it's larger. Like it's it's really easy to get excited about a giant plant like this. Ah! Um. And I'll link that video in the cards as well if you're interested. My next 2022 goal is to keep up with fertilizing, which I think will be really easy if I continue keeping up with watering, but last year I was really bad about fertilizing my plants. I just found that it was such a chore to like mix up the fertilizer every time, and so I just really didn't keep up with it. But I think this is the year of, you know, actually continuously fertilizing my plants. And... I have not been fertilizing my plants because it's winter and I know some people do, but I just haven't really felt like I want to. I don't know. I think there's definitely pros and cons and there are some plants that probably would be doing better if I were fertilizing them right now and there are some plants that maybe wouldn't be and it's just easier just to not. So starting in the spring, I'm going to start fertilizing my plants regularly and in the past I've used fish fertilizer which is stinky, but it's natural and it's difficult to burn your plants with fish fertilizer. It's a pretty safe choice. But I'm also interested in trying out Liquidirt and oh, there's another like really popular one that I'm curious about trying. So I might also try out some new fertilizers, but mainly this is the year that my plants are going to be fertilized super well. And I have three more goals for 2022 that aren't necessarily goals that I'm like, yes, this is definitely going to happen, but I'm kind of thinking of like keeping them in the back of my mind as things that I'd like to do. And so if an opportunity arises to like let myself take it. And I think having goals like that just in your everyday life is a perfectly fine and honestly like really awesome thing to do. Like when you set goals for yourself, there can be a difference between like goals that you definitely are going to accomplish and do everything to accomplish and if you don't accomplish them you're going to be really disappointed. Maybe that last one is like a little bit too negative but you know what I mean like there's those like very serious goals but there's nothing wrong with having other goals that like you maybe want to do some like sometime this year but if it doesn't happen if it doesn't work out that's okay and so I would put these last three goals in kind of that second bucket. And the first one is that I want to order some plants online and I've kind of avoided doing that just because there's a few reasons, but honestly, I really like picking out a specific plant. And this doesn't like necessarily only pertain to shopping online, but like even if a plant shop near me does an auction or something like that, I don't like that I don't get to like see the plant in person and pick it out. I just would really rather do that. And so I've kind of avoided ordering plants online, honestly, mostly for that reason. That like I, it's like when I see a plant and I'm going to buy it, it's like I just know that like that plant is mine and like, I don't know, like the endorphin rush from like buying a new plant is like a big thing. And ordering online, I just, I you don't get to pick it out yourself and that makes me kind of sad so I haven't done it and along with that when you order a plant online it oftentimes can come in shock or like maybe not in the conditions that you expected it would be in and there's just like a whole host of potential problems that can happen however there's a lot of pros to ordering plants online and that a lot of times you can get uncommon plants that you can't get in person for cheaper and that's like one of the big things that has led me to decide that I do want to actually purchase some plants online is that if I'm going to purchase like invest more in my plant collection and purchase a few larger plants 
it might be the best fiscal decision to buy those online versus buying them from somewhere local. I am still going to be shopping local. I love picking up my plants in person, but in 2022, I'd like to at least order like a couple plants online. And my next soft goal, maybe that's what we'll call it, is that I really want an Ikea cabinet. And I've had my heart set on the Fabricor, and I thought that the Ikea Fabricor could go on my main floor and it would like fit in really well. And then I've heard people say that it's discontinued. And so I actually convinced myself that I don't need the Fabricor and I'd probably get a Millsbo instead and just put that either upstairs or downstairs in my house, which are not my main living area. So like I wouldn't get to see my plants as much. That would be kind of sad, but it's bigger so I could fit more plants in it. Um, and then this week, the Fabricor came in stock at the Minneapolis Ikea, which is like three hours away from me, which is one of the closest Ikeas. Like I do not have an Ikea anywhere nearby. I, I don't think three hours counts as really that close, but, uh, the exact Fabricor that I wanted came in stock and we had a giant snowstorm. So there was just no way I was going to be able to go get it. And it was so painful to not be able to go get it. So I'm still kind of bummed about that, but <laughs> now I don't know because if a Fabricor comes in stock at another Ikea that's like three hours away, I feel like I'll want to go get the Fabricor, but like now I kind of want a Millsbo too. So maybe I'll get two. I don't know. But this is kind of a soft goal because a lot of it just depends on, I'd be fine buying an Ikea cabinet secondhand if one popped up, but I can't control that. And I can't control when Ikea cabinets are going to come into stock and if it's going to be a convenient time for me to drive three hours there and three hours back to go pick it up. Or, you know, what cabinets are even gonna be in stock. So this is kind of a soft goal. I'd really love to get one this year, but I don't know if it's gonna happen or not. And my last goal is something that I would really like to try, but I don't know if it'll happen this year or not. And that is to import my first plant imports from probably Indonesia. And the reason why I just don't know if this is going to happen is because I think before I import plants from across the world, it's probably a good idea for me to order some plants online first from somewhere else. <laughs> and so I need to like first order plants from like, I don't know, Steve's Leaves or somewhere. And then maybe I can do an import because I have no business attempting to get a plant acclimated from my home from Indonesia if I've never even acclimated a plant that only came from like Georgia or something, because that's still like, no matter what, plants are gonna be shocked from shipping, but like I should really start with a plant that's going to be less shocked, you know? Um, but I've watched a ton of videos on dealing with imports and like getting them acclimated to your home and like what to do if you see certain things. And I'd really like to experiment and like try out different things that I've seen online. And mainly, I mean, it's just so much cheaper to import plants. You get so much better deals. It comes with a risk because the plants can really come in shock and come in not great condition because they had to go through so much, but you can save a lot of money if it works out. And I'm trying to build my collection and not spend an arm and a leg. And so I think stepping into imports next could be a good next step for me. But again, it's kind of a soft goal. I don't know if it'll happen, but it's something that I kind of have in the back of my mind. All right, and I think that's it. So in total, I think I learned four big overarching plant lessons in 2021. And I have three like very hard goals for 2022 and three soft goals for 2022. And so I hope that this video maybe inspired you to think about the things you learned with your collection last year and maybe what you want to accomplish this year. And don't be afraid to have soft goals. You don't have to accomplish every goal that you set. Just having them in the back of your mind can often be a really powerful tool. Let me know what your plant lessons learn in 2021 and your future goals for 2022 are in the comments. Definitely make sure that you subscribe to this video and my Instagram and TikTok are linked down below. My Instagram is Sloan's Common Ground and my TikTok is Slow Wheel. And TikTok is actually where I got started on social media. It's one of my favorite platforms. I've like definitely been posting more on YouTube lately, probably, but I love TikTok. So I'd love it if you would give me a follow on both of those and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.